Well, we are live now from COP27 with Sean Sheikh, Egypt, at the Digital Innovation Pavilion, brought to you by IAI Gotcha and the Climate Change Coalition in partnership, co-hosted by a unique network NFT platform, the HBAR Foundation, Sustex and Carbon Market Exchange. And uh, today we are here with Ira Feldman uh, from Adaptation Leader Initiative and uh, he's also the leader of the Climate Chain Lab for Adaptation and Resilience. And virtually we have with us Tom Baumann, the co-chair of the Climate Chain Coalition, who will now take over the lead and uh, guide us uh, on um, blockchain for climate with a focus on adaptation and uh, explain us the new institutional and strategic uh, innovations of the Climate Chain Coalition, which will help us to lead in this field. Please, Tom, take the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Miroslav. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, Ira. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's event, which is to uh, announce the launch of the new Climate Chain Lab for Adaptation and Resilience. Again, my name is Tom Bauman. I'm joining remotely from Ottawa, Canada. I um, would like to start um, with a little context for the audience who might be new to the Climate Chain Coalition. We are a, an open global multi-stakeholder network founded in uh, December 2017. And so we're uh, celebrating our fifth anniversary at COP27. We uh, started with 12 founding organizations and uh, as of COP27, we've grown to 361 organizations uh, in 69 countries. Uh, leading up to COP27, we uh, did a stock take of our membership in terms of our database of information uh, and produced a stock take report, which um, was a fundamental part of forming our new strategy two elements of which uh, that are very important are uh, being um, co-partners uh, with IAI Glotcha on the Digital Innovation Pavilion and the launching of a series of new climate chain labs. And so I'll just provide a little bit of uh, background. Um, the Climate Chain Coalition over the first five years was very much creating a global network as a big tent. Um, approximately half of the membership develop blockchain solutions combined with other emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and also IoT to apply to a, a, a range of different applications and sectors. And we, um, uh, our membership over the first five years would uh, self-organize into member-driven initiatives on key issues or to uh, create uh, regionally focused um, uh, teams uh, that uh, were in the scope of the Climate Chain Coalition's uh, mission. And up on the screen, you'll see our new path forward, which builds upon forming networks in this global community and providing the means to share information at events such as today, where awareness building continues to be an important element of our activities, particularly for stakeholders that are new uh, to the space of emerging technologies for climate innovations and particularly for transformative uh, and ambitious uh, climate uh, uh, innovations to now uh, with such a, a large uh, uh, global network. And we've found out in our stock take how many members now have moved from um, simply researching and early stage activities 
to commercial products and solutions that are going into the marketplace. I think well over 50 of those uh, now exist. And so um, we're supporting members in their journey towards mobilizing resources they need to become uh, uh, active in the market and then to um, <clears throat> uh, start to create or co-create the supporting digital and data infrastructures that provide the cohesiveness uh, and sort of shared uh, capabilities for the many different types of solutions to work in concert. So uh, this uh, graphic here helps to illustrate how the membership begins by joining and, and networking and then um, advances to more of a cooperative and leading leadership uh, type of activities in the form of climate chain labs. Uh, and we'll go into a bit more detail of uh, what the labs um, are in general. And then Ira Feldman will talk about the adaptation and resilience lab more specifically. Um, and then ultimately deploying these solutions to market as rapidly as possible so they, they can help achieve the transformative impacts. So um, it, just to quickly introduce the adaptation and resilience climate chain lab, when we looked through our stock take, we um, uh, could identify an increase, over a 100% increase amongst the Climate Chain Coalition members uh, in terms of their prioritization of adaptation and resilience as a priority. There are many priorities, um, and that's all in the stock take report. Uh, but roughly 40% uh, of our members overall ranked adaptation and resilience as a top priority, which uh, is a relatively recent change amongst the membership. Adaptation and resilience was a priority, but now to become so much higher really helped to substantiate the timing is right to create this climate chain lab. And so um, in the discussions leading up to COP, very pleased to um, see that in relatively quick order, some of the other communities, such as Arise US, who, and there are many others that are starting to look at emerging technologies like blockchain, um, felt um, that it would be wise to uh, collaborate. And at this point, I will uh, invite uh, Ira Feldman to uh, to take over uh, speaking. I, I can control the slides here if that would be uh, beneficial, or if they're available on site, Ira or your Mirosov, you could do it. Thank you, Tom. I think uh, I'll just indicate when I'm moving to the next slide, if you could keep advancing them, that would be great. Um, also, uh, it is a pleasure to be here in Sharm El Sheikh at the Digital Innovation Pavilion with Miroslav. Uh, Miroslav, Tom, and I have worked together over the past several months to pull together and co-author uh, the Climate Chain Coalition's Strategy 2.0, which is uh, officially titled Collaboration for Transformative Digital Climate Innovation. Uh, we're very excited uh, about the path forward that's laid out in this uh, strategy document. And as Tom alluded to, one of the new functionalities, I'll call it, of the Climate Chain Coalition uh, is the launch of the Climate Chain Labs. There will be several of these labs uh, based on uh, different themes. Last week here, we had the launch of the Climate Chain Lab for Finance. Today, I am here to help the Climate Change Coalition launch the Climate Chain Lab for Adaptation and Resilience. This should not be a surprise. Uh, to anyone here at this COP, knowing that uh, for many this COP is the adaptation COP. 
we have finally reached a tipping point where adaptation and mitigation will be treated on a par going forward uh, to play catch up. Play catch up uh, after many, many years of adaptation and resilience, receiving much less attention and much less funding than mitigation activities. And there's a reason uh, for that. Um, Adaptation is still uh, an emerging space from the perspective of metrics, standards, best practices, and the need to enhance the flow of finance. In particular, uh, it is not clear yet how we should most effectively measure success for adaptation uh, and resilience, and that ties directly to the availability of finance. Without the certainty that we can measure success of adaptation and resilience activities, it would be a challenge to develop the financial flows necessary for adaptation and resilience uh, activities. But many of us believe that the emerging technologies space, to be more specific, the advent of blockchain, the Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence, those three in particular taken together are commonly referred to as the emerging technologies in the digital technologies space. If Digital technologies have been helpful in advancing the mitigation climate practice. I can only wonder at the impact that these digital technologies will have in the adaptation and resilience space. Why is that? Because we know that mitigation can be reduced to only one metric, carbon dioxide equivalence. In that sense, mitigation is pretty straightforward, not very complicated, easy to measure success. Adaptation is much, much more complex. There is no single metric to measure adaptation or resilience. It's that complexity, the complexity that will emerge from multiple relevant data sets and data streams to measure adaptation and resilience activities. And it is that complexity, that combination, the confluence of data that will require emerging technologies like blockchain to manage the assessment and support of adaptation and resilience activities. The complexity, the certainty, these are key aspects of distributed ledger technology and why we are very confident that emerging technologies like blockchain will have a transformative effect of the state of play of adaptation uh, and resilience in the years to come. To that end, the Climate Chain Coalition is establishing the Climate Chain Lab for Adaptation and Resilience. Why are we doing that? We're trying to provide a structure for the development of tools, frameworks, and processes to support the assessment, management, and coordination of projects proposed by teams of climate change coalition members relating to the use of emerging tech to advance adaptation and resilience solutions. What will we try to accomplish with this climate change lab for adaptation and resilience? Well, first of all, we need to identify and recruit additional adaptation and resilience experts for climate change coalition membership. As Tom 
suggested in his introductory comments thus far, the Climate Change Coalition has been focused principally on mitigation, meaning greenhouse gas reduction uh, activities. That is going to change because the entire climate change discourse is in the process of changing right here at COP27 to recognize the significance of adaptation uh, and resilience. We're going to have to work with the Climate Change Coalition leadership to raise awareness and build capacity for adaptation and resilience within the existing broader Climate Change Coalition membership because thus far, and I know I'm talking about all of you out there, uh, those of you who understand greenhouse gas reduction and mitigation really well, I know that most of you have not paid that much attention to adaptation and resilience. And one of the functions of the Climate Change Lab on adaptation and resilience will, to, will be to build that awareness, raise that capacity among our own members on adaptation and resilience concepts and best uh, practices. The other thing that uh, we expect to do, going beyond our own Climate Change Coalition membership, is that we will liaise, and we are already doing this, with other adaptation and resilience organizations. There are many adaptation and resilience initiatives and organizations out there and have been for many years. And they are all doing a great job even in the absence of adequate uh, financing. However, most of those initiatives, while expert on adaptation and resilience, are not necessarily aware of the technical aspects of these emerging technologies and the facilitative role they will play in advancing adaptation and resilience. So we are proactively reaching out to other adaptation and resilience organizations that have not necessarily been aware of the potential benefits of, for example, blockchain to advance adaptation and resilience technologies. As Tom alluded to in his opening remarks, uh, we are pleased to announce here today that one of those initiatives, Arise US, Arise is the private sector initiative in the United States advancing the Sendai framework under UNDRR. The Arise US group has already agreed to partner with the Climate Change Lab on Adaptation and Resilience in a variety of different ways, including participation in a symposium in the first quarter of 2023 on the use of emerging technologies in disaster risk reduction. So uh, that will be a reciprocal relationship, and we are looking forward to welcoming many, many more external partners uh, for the Climate Chain Lab for Adaptation and Resilience. We'll be successful if we manage to accomplish three things. First and foremost, uh, the lab exists for Climate Chain Coalition members to come together in teams to launch and incubate adaptation and resilience projects. Before this presentation ends, I will ask Tom to go back to the wonderful slide that he showed that uh, provides a visual of how uh, the Climate Change Coalition works uh, with the uh, networking and uh, also the, the team um, and identification of where the labs fit in. Uh, that, uh, there, there is the, um, 
a graphic uh, right in the middle there. You can see the uh, circles indicating the labs and the circles looping together a number of climate change coalition members. That is a graphical representation better than I can articulate uh, of how the lab is supposed to work. So, uh, first and foremost, we're going to launch and incubate those projects led by teams of CCC members. We're going to recruit additional members to build the adaptation base of CCC. We're going to convene activities to build adaptation literacy within our own membership. And again, to this point, we have been largely litigation-centric, and that must change given that adaptation and litigation are inextricably linked. So among the things we hope to do, we expect to have uh, informational webinars, short courses, uh, provide briefings, and convene external partner events all toward enhancing adaptation literacy. And uh, as I alluded to, uh, beginning with Arise US, we will develop a network of external partner organizations already focused on adaptation and resilience. Um, my own organization, the US-based not-for-profit adaptation leader, is uh, proud to be among the uh, coordinating leaders of this lab uh, to be announced soon are other organizations that will play a coordinating and leadership role in the lab for adaptation and resilience and the leaders will be both adaptation experts and digital tech experts because we need both and uh, I st stop here and turn it back to Tom and Miroslav by saying if you're an adaptation expert, or if you're a digital tech expert who's interested in advancing the adaptation and resilience space, we need you. Please be in touch with me, or Tom, or Miroslav, and uh, let's continue this conversation and have you participate in the lab. Miroslav. Thank you very much, Ira, for this leadership, and thanks, Tom, for the great work that the Climate Change Coalition is doing as the leading network of organizations that look on how to promote and uh, enhance the uptake of blockchain technology for climate action globally. And uh, with this, I would like to give the audience the opportunity for quick questions. Uh, are things clear for you, or do you have suggestions on how this new form of cooperation could be facilitated even better? Please. Ah, okay. <coughs> Thank you so much. My name is Abusinje. I come from Uganda. Uh, in East Africa. Uh, we appreciate uh, this coalition and uh, the power of uh, digital uh, technology in uh, playing a key role uh, in the adaptation and mitigation of climate change. Um, my question is that uh, do you have uh, a strategy on how to mobilize African private sector companies that play part in digitalization um, uh, to come and show their interest uh, in joining this coalition. Is there um, a strategy? And how best um, can I personally contribute uh, to the achievement and objectives of the goals of this coalition? Thank you so much. So if I understood your question, you're asking, do we have a strategy to enhance African participation in the lab? Um, well, uh, there certainly is going to be an emphasis in the lab on African projects, uh, in part because all along, uh, African countries have been equally concerned about adaptation and resilience as mitigation. It's the rest of the world that has been trailing in trying to um, 
uh, pay adequate attention to adaptation and resilience. So in Africa, where adaptation and resilience has all along been a major concern, uh, we anticipate that the projects that our members and our partners will incubate uh, will in fact have a heavy representation uh, in Africa. That is the, lo the logic answer. The actual strategic answer is we're not going to sit down in the front row and wait for everyone to come to us. Uh, we are uh, very well connected in the adaptation and resilience world. We are going to be proactive in reaching out to adaptation and resilience uh, groups that are already active in Africa, and you may be aware that there are many of them. And you may have sat in on the, on the many adaptation and resilience in Africa panels that have already taken place here in the first week. I've been listening and writing down the names of all the people that I need to contact to make sure they know about this lab to actively participate. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Yes, Himansha, please. So every time I hold the mic, it seems to be something really happening. Well, first of all, I missed most of your presentation, but it's very intriguing, it's very interesting. I just wanted to understand how do you involve scientific partners, the research partners? How do you, how do you involve the research partners, the academia? If I am getting your question, how will the partners participate? Uh, the scientific. Of scientific partners. Well, uh, scientific or otherwise, I don't discriminate against scientific partners. Uh, uh, we we have a model, and you may have missed uh, that part. Close of the, the presentation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, we first of all need to partner with uh, academic institutions who can help raise awareness of adaptation and resilience among our own climate change coalition members who until this point have been principally concerned with greenhouse gas reduction or mitigation. That's number one. Secondly, we will need to partner with scientific partners and I'll lump together technology partners who can help us convey to the adaptation and resilience experts how the advances in blockchain, internet of things, and artificial intelligence can, uh, I'll use the word advisedly, leapfrog uh, over where we are today in the state of play on adaptation and resilience. I mentioned earlier that so far there really are not consensus metrics standards and best practices for adaptation and resilience. And a lot of adaptation and resilience needs to be done sector by sector and in particular geographies. So there is uh, a great need for that uh, specialized uh, scientific and technical knowledge in order to develop the metrics, the standards, and identify the good or best practices that will be necessary to take us beyond where we are today. Today, to this point, yes, there's been a lot of good work in adaptation and resilience, but it's been very ad hoc. And one of the things that we hope to do with uh, the lab is to communicate Yes, uh, uh, scientific and technical partners through convenings, whether they be in-person convenings, not necessarily at COPs, but uh, you're familiar with the many academic conferences. Uh, we need to make those in academia uh, aware that there is this confluence of thinking on the adaptation and resilience, among adaptation and resilience experts, 
coming together with the digital technology experts. Uh, that confluence is not yet recognized by many people uh, at all, and that is one of the main purposes of this lab. Thank you very much, Ira. Thank you very much, Manchu. Any further questions? Everyone welcome. This here is the Digital Innovation Pavilion. It's the space for digital solution providers to come to present their solutions and to connect with uh, the climate action community, with the climate governance community, so that we find pathways towards enhanced climate action which is digitally enabled that we discuss about uh, the potential negative consequences of uh, digital uh, technologies of course also the carbon footprint of uh, digital um, infrastructure and uh, the transactions that we have so a critical open creative discussion and therefore Wonderful to have you, Ira Feldman, for adaptation leader, Tom Baumann, Climate Check and Nova Sphere from Canada, the Climate Change Coalition co-chair. And uh, yeah, if you have any contributions to the debate, any solutions, comments, questions, please uh, join. We'll be happy to give you the mic, but let's perhaps get, uh, get back to Tom. Uh, I've seen you have... Uh, Send some messages there if you would like perhaps uh, to present them directly. Thank you very much, Miroslav, and thank you, Ira, as well as the audience for those questions. Those are very good questions. Just to elaborate a bit more on the uh, point of partnerships, the coalition being a multi stakeholder network itself. Um, includes many of the different uh, user uh, and non-solution developer category types, including finance and governments and, and NGOs. And each one has uh, potentially valuable contributions that can be made. Of course, the scientific community um, is an essential stakeholder category. And we, we identify them within the academic and research area. Uh, but we also would like to bring in the um, financiers who are looking to better understand what are some of the emerging solutions for adaptation and resilience. And as Ira noted, given the uh, immense diversity of adaptation situations and solutions, uh, it is a lot to try to understand, even in, in some of the, the verticals themselves. So um, we welcome a discussion with uh, uh, any organization that would like to get involved to determine what was what would be the best way and, and uh, put that within the context of a, a work plan of this lab, which would be an evergreen document, much like the other labs. Uh, so that we're continually um, uh, evolving and generating as much value as possible for our members and other stakeholders as well. I, I think I'm sharing my screen with the uh, map that we've created. It's a um, uh, constantly updated map, which um, is available on the internet. It currently uh, provides um, information for each one of these uh, points on the map about the the member, uh, what uh, their description, who's the contact person website, um, and we're also augmenting it with the additional information of what is their priority areas, if it's adaptation, mitigation, finance, and so on, which markets are their priority markets, who are their priority stakeholders, which blockchain technologies are they using and, and other information as well and we hope that that will help to um, uh, enable uh, stakeholders who have not yet come to the coalition determine for themselves uh, where they best could fit in or uh, how to to get involved one way or the other so the coalition is creating these labs as part of uh, a multi-phase, multi-approach uh, 
uh, recognizing the diversity of where stakeholders are at. Some are very new to the space, others are more advanced, been working several years. And so these types of tools like the map and, and some of the knowledge pieces that we put out are uh, meant to facilitate the uh, new stakeholders coming into network and then eventually getting towards cooperating and, and getting solutions out to the marketplace. So um, I'm personally um, very happy that we have now officially announced the climate change lab for adaptation and resilience and the timing couldn't be better with COP27. There is a lot of work ahead of us so we welcome people to get in touch with us and uh, we'll uh, hammer out a, a roadmap and work plan over the coming weeks. Any final remarks? I apologize because I don't see the, the audience uh, uh, and I'm not sure if we're wrapping up at this phase or if there's another event. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you very much, Tom. And uh, thank you very much, Ira. I think this was an important event today. Wishing the Climate Change Lab on our patient and resilience much success. And we have to connect the dots. We have to connect the, the solution providers, the academics, the users, uh, and really be much faster in uh, climate action and much more ambition, ambitious because the current uh, trajectory is not good for the world. <laughs> Let's uh, work for digital innovations, for cultural innovations, for social innovations, public sector innovations and let's accelerate our action and our level of ambition. So with this, thank you very much.